I'm a state court judge here in Henry County. I was elected into office last year. Um, I actually was sworn in in November and actually took office on January 1st of 2019. So I've been on the bench now uh, about nine months. Well, I practiced law for 27 years before I became a state court judge and I represented, uh, we'll say the little guy for years. So I've been helping people uh, with their problems for 27 years. And then I actually became a magistrate court judge or a part-time magistrate court judge uh, several years ago. And uh, when the chance came along for me to run for office and uh, become a state court judge full-time, um, I you know, took that opportunity and so I could you know, keep trying to help people best I can and, and serve the community, try to keep the community safe. Judge Ernest Blunt, who's a, a state court judge here in Henry County, started the DUI court 10 years ago. And I guess the whole premise behind the DUI court is to uh, try to re rehabilitate uh, the offender, the DUI court offender, um, outside of jail rather than in jail. Uh, uh, the statistics, the st excuse me, the statistics show that by putting them in a DUI court program where there's intensive counseling um, and other therapeutic measures that they're having to go through, uh, their chances of reoffending are much, much lower uh, than if you just put them in jail. So uh, the whole theory behind it is rather than to jail people uh, into not reoffending, uh, we're actually trying to help them and, uh, and get to the bottom of their problem, uh, get to the root of the issue, uh, to try to help them learn, number one, that they don't need to be drinking anymore, and number two, that they don't need to be driving and drinking. Um, so that's what uh, the DUI court is all about. It's, uh, you know, while you know, we, we want to keep the community safe uh, and while, you know, the community wants uh, people who have offended uh, to be punished, uh, we're, you know, I guess holding them accountable, okay, by uh, making them do certain things uh, other than sit in jail. And uh, the, like I said, the, the statistics show that uh, the program works. Uh, over the course of the program, uh, I think the, the statistic is 92% of all of our graduates do not reoffend or have not reoffended, uh, which to me is remarkable given the fact that. Uh, in order to get into DUI court, you have to be a, uh, a defendant who is uh, facing their second DUI in five years or third or more in life. So we're talking about uh, mid-range and, and high-range uh, risk uh, offenders. Uh, we're not talking about first-time offenders. We're talking about people who've, who have drinking issues and people who have, um, you know, had more than one DUI in their life. So we, we feel like that statistic is, is remarkable and, and we, we, uh, that's proof that the, the program actually works. All right, we've had, uh, I believe, 196 graduates uh, from this program. So out of those 196 people, 92% uh, of those people have not reoffended. Okay, uh, and again, we feel like that's remarkable. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure of the actual uh, statistic of uh, as far as what the recidivism rate is for offenders that do not go through the DUI court program, but I believe it's somewhere down in the 50% range. It, yes, exactly. It, it it does work, and these these are not statistics that I'm. Make up. These are statistics that are being reported uh, to the state of Georgia and that are um, 
gathered every year by the state of Georgia. And, uh, in order to be eligible to get into the DUI court, it, it has to be your second DUI in five years or your third or more DUI in life. And a lot of times there will be some jail time on the front end of a, a DUI court sentence, but it, the, the jail time is minimized. It's, it's shortened as a result of the uh, defendant being willing uh, to go into the program. Okay, so you know, for instance, we might have an offender who is facing their fifth or sixth DUI in life. Uh, so they might have to uh, go to jail for 30 days or 60 days before they actually enter the program. Okay, and uh, I guess the, the solicitor's office here in Henry County is the gatekeeper as far as who gets into the program, and who's recommended to get into the program. So if a recommendation is made by them uh, that is agreed to by the defendant, and then is of course agreed to by the court, then that defendant will come into the program. So uh, whether they serve time before entering into the program or not, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to have an assessment done, a uh, alcohol and drug assessment to find out uh, number one, if they have a problem, and number two, if they do have a problem, what kind of problem is it, and what kind of treatment do they need, okay? Um, that's the first thing that happens. Uh, after that, uh, they enter the program and they start uh, counseling, okay? They go to counseling at least once a week, uh, if not more. Um, and that is with SAC DUI, okay, uh, with Gloria and Karen McGrone. Um, so they will counsel with uh, the Legrones for pretty much the, the balance of the DUI court program. So while they're doing counseling, they're also having to go to AA three times a week. They're also having to report to probation once a week. They're also being screened for alcohol and drugs at least two times a week, if not more. And they're also subject to surveillance, uh, daily surveillance by surveillance officers who go out to the house and to uh, make sure that the, the defendant or the participant is uh, meeting curfew and, and also to make sure that they don't have any alcohol in the house. So uh, the, uh, of course, the, the while they're doing all this, they're also having to pay fines. They're also having to do community service. So, and, and of course also, they have to come to court. They have to come to court uh, uh, on average about three times a month and uh, uh, to meet with me uh, so we can go over their progress and to talk about things that are going on in their life and to talk about things that they're learning in counseling and uh, and in the program. Is protect and keep the community safe. Okay, and that, that's, that's all of us. Okay, so we want to keep the community safe. We also want to keep the participants safe. Okay, from harming himself. Um, but, you know, it, it's gratifying to see somebody come in the program whose life is in total disorder, who is broken, who has all kinds of problems, and who has used alcohol to try to deal with those problems. And it's just gratifying to see them go through the program, and uh, it's gratifying to see their life changed. Okay, we, we actually watch their life change. We watch them uh, change on a weekly and monthly basis. And uh, when we get to the end of the program, and it's time for them to graduate, and they have uh, met all the conditions of the program, and their life has changed uh, through relationships with their family being mended, uh, with them being able to hold a job, with them being able to, to uh, basically have a clear head and be able to think uh, and make good decisions for themselves. Uh, man, that's so gratifying. And um, that, that's why I do it. Uh, you know, everybody knows uh, 
Well, most people know somebody that's had some kind of problem with alcohol or drugs, okay? I have. And so to see somebody overcome that and um, really help themselves to become a productive member of society and to see them being able to reestablish their relationships with their family and friends and even with God, to me it's amazing. So, you know, the criminal behavior, as far as the DUI goes, is, is, is knowing that you're impaired, but making the decision to get behind the wheel and drive, okay? That's the actual criminal behavior, okay? There's a lot of people out there that drink, um, but understand that they can't get behind the wheel of a car, okay? They understand that that's a danger to the people around them as well as themselves. Okay, um, there are people uh, that are in our program as well as many people out there in society who have a drinking issue. They have a drinking problem and they can't, they can't help themselves. Okay, um, and it doesn't mean they're a bad person. Uh, it means they've got a problem. It means they're broken. And, uh, you know, we're all broken in some form or fashion, but you know these people are broken because they they've got issues that have led them to drink, and that, and and now they have a drinking problem. So we try to address that in our program, and uh, our program and the curriculum that our the Legrones go by is evidence based. Uh, that means that the curriculum has been tested, and it's been it's been tested uh, to the point where. Um, DUI courts all over the state are using the same curriculum that, that we use. And, um, you know, if the, the curriculum is taught properly, um, it works. And um, so that's what, that's what we're doing here in your County, DUI court. We do not have that in place right now, but there actually needs to be uh, something like that in place. Uh, you know, through our the symposium that we had recently, we tried to bring uh, to the community awareness of, of what all of our accountability courts are doing in Henry County. Um, but there needs to be prevention, that, that is, and, and that's education, you know, and that starts in, in school, that starts at home. And, um, you know, we, we, as a court, uh, need to be more involved in that as far as trying to educate our kids and educate and, and I guess give our schools the information that they need to educate our students on the dangers of alcohol and drugs and, and, and the kind of things and problems that can be brought into your life if you don't um, if you don't I guess if you, well if you're not responsible 